Hello everybody and welcome to a new Plant Zoo video where we're talking a new DLC to um, sort of create. And last time we did Antarctica and now we are doing Latin America, a region that still sees um, quite a lot lacking from it, particularly animal-wise. Plant-wise, yeah, we, we could do with a few more, I, I could say. But overall, the animals of South America and Central America are currently probably the, the most, um, or should I say, least represented in Planet Zoo. We really don't have that many in comparison to continents like um, Asia or North America or Africa. Europe, you could argue, has little representation, but you can sort of cross over a few animals from North America to Europe. So it's pretty well covered animals wise. Oceania, well, we just received the Oceania pack. So a lot of representation is um, pretty much covered for the region. But South America, or should I say Latin America, is still lacking a fair bit. And I think this animal pack and the accompanying um, update features can change that. So without further ado, let's get straight into the animals. So the first animal is the black howler monkey, one of South America's largest primates and one of the loudest in the world. And we have had howler monkey scenery in Plant Zoo for a, ever since the beginning. The monkey saw like the monkey silhouette sign that you get in the base game resembles that of a howler monkey particularly. So getting the howler monkey in Plant Zoo officially is um, pretty much the right step as it is the last of the animals that have signs in the base game but aren't actually present in the game itself. Arid Pack sort of um, saw to that, adding both the black rhino and the dromedary camel in the same update. And I think it was the Red Deer last year for the anniversary. But um, Black Owl Monkey, I think, is a great headliner for this pack. Given their impressive voices, would make for a great headliner. Next animal is the number three on the meta wish list. I believe it's number three. Yeah. The South American Kawati, a relative of the raccoon and ringtail, as well as its closer relative, the white-nosed Kawati. Um, these are widespread in captivity and would make a fine addition to the game. A very versatile species as they are both arboreal and very capable animals on the ground. So they would be great to see as they are pretty much unique in comparison to every other animal we have. So it would be great to see a Kawati in Plant Zoo one day. Next is the Joffroy Spider Monkey, or the Central American Spider Monkey, or Black Handed Spider Monkey. Whatever you choose to call it, the Joffroy Spider Monkey is by far the most represented spider monkey in captivity. With many zoos worldwide, in Australia as well, Australia's got plenty of Black Handed Spider Monkeys in zoos. I'm just going to use all those different names, I think. But, um... Yeah, this should be one of the first animals outside of the apes to utilize brachiation. And it pretty much is the only animal to use brachiation, aside from orangutans, chimpanzees, and gibbons. And we've got most of those in the game already. Ch the chimpanzees and bonobos, um, of course, can't brachiate just yet. But who knows, maybe they will eventually. But Joffrey spider monkeys would be able to do it in a more unique way, going hand over hand, but also using utilizing their tails as well, allowing them to hang from that tail as it is pretty much as powerful as any of its arms or legs. And their unique vocalizations would of course add to the Central American atmosphere um, or, Central, or South American atmospheres, depending on where you build, um, of your zoos. Next is the Southern Tamandua, a tree-dwelling relative of the far larger giant anteater. So these guys have prehensile tails as well, so there'll be a few animals in this pack that'll be able to hang by their tails, and are very capable in trees. So Southern Tamandua would be a great species, it's highly requested by the community, and given their unique coloration, they would be a sight to behold in the trees. Ocelot is one of the few felines that is still heavily requested by the community. 
I think it is, in fact, um, the most requested feline right now. Um, yeah. So, um, I don't really have too much to say on the Nocelot's part, but they are very beautiful looking cats and would make a fine addition to your South American zoos if you wanted to do, like, the different stages of um, big cat that, or, or wild cat that you have in the Central and South American forests. You go Jaguar at the top, then Ocelot, and even though we don't have it, Margay at the bottom. But um, overall, it would be a great animal to see. The Greater Rhea is the last ratite we need, and pretty much the last ratite available. And um, yeah, they are pretty much South America's ostrich. They look, they look it too, <laughs> but uh, they are heavily requested by the community as well as one of the most predominant animals of the grasslands of South America. And yeah, this pack needed a bird and the Greater Rhea fills that slot perfectly as the continent's largest. I believe our last habitat animal is the collared peccary, an animal found on all three regions of the Americas. So you've got North America, where they're found in the southern states, the Central American regions such as Mexico, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, collared peccaries are all through that, and into northern South America. They're a very versatile species and a very welcome addition to the game as um, they are a unique swine in comparison to the others as pretty much all of them have tusks right now. But they all swine have tusks, but this guy um, doesn't really show them. Now on to one of the most controversial ideas I think I've got in this, in this video, and that is... Um, something I'll go into a bit later, but I've got a selection of eight miniature monkeys of the South American rainforest. So the Golden Lion Tamarin, the Cotton Top Tamarin, the Emperor Tamarin, Golden Headed Lion Tamarin, the Common Marmoset, White Headed Marmoset, Goldie's Marmoset, and lastly the Pygmy Marmoset. And all these species would I will get into the feature later, but will be able to be used in walkthrough exhibits as well as in habitats. This would be a great excuse just to get as many South American primates as possible, as the tamarins and marmosets are a very diverse group, and having one just doesn't really um, feel right when there's such a diversity of them. You've got all these different tamarins and you've got all these different marmosets, why not bring them, bring a, a large selection into Planet 2? That way, given South American primate sections, great diversity in both hairstyles and size, as not all these animals are the same size, but they do share very similar behaviours. The, the most you'll have to do is change the model, and that is pretty much it. Their hair is very similar to each other, so it's pretty easy to, to replicate onto different, onto different models. So, um, yeah, that's just my selection right now of the animals. There are, of course, a few alternatives, such as the bush dog, the South American tapir, um, the margay, the uh, spectacle bear, though I'm very confident that we'll get that in a mountains DLC. Um, what else? Red-legged sariemas, modern terror birds they are. Um, some other armadillos, like the giant armadillo, the six-banded, the southern three-banded. All sorts of animals from South America can be considered, as you saw a majority of them in my top 50 um, meta wishlist animals for South America. But, um, moving on to the career scenario, so you'll, you'll be joining Emma Goodwin and um, Bernie Goodwin on a journey to South America in Ecuador's Amazon rainforest, where you'll be working with local parks and wildlife services to... Um, set up a pristine area of rainforest to preserve the animals that live there. All the animals in the DLC will be able to be used here as they are. They will be a representative of the great biodiversity of the Amazon rainforest um, for the governments of Ecuador and of the rest of South America. It's an ambitious career scenario, but a good one. You'd, you'd pretty much be building a sort of rescue center and um, yeah, housing all sorts of South American animals to appease the, the government to do more to help prevent further deforestation of the, of the planet's largest rainforest. 
On to some new enrichment items and habitat items that I've got in mind. One is a hanging log feeder, so animals would be able to climb onto that and get the food inside. Another would be a suspended fruit feeder. So this would either be hanging from a pole or be outstretched between a hanging pole and the ground. This is why the Aldabra tortoise you can see in the picture is able to munch down on it. Another item is um, suspended troughs or just different kinds of troughs in general as the ones we've got right now are pretty basic can I say that um, but you know what I mean like they're, they're very particular so they have a certain theme that they go with and that's it you can't really um, use them or have your animals feeding different ways so having them either sitting on the edge of the fence or in a big stand that's sort of what I'm going for here so, sort of the different feeding troughs you'd see on a an agricultural property all that sort of stuff um, the Kawada Mundi could have a new, new feeder which is hanging with these different cylinders with holes with treats inside just for them to use their foraging behaviors and their large noses um, some more primate hammocks some more versatile hammocks really hanging from different branches would be great for different primates and other arboreal species to take the load off and just chill in the hammock for a bit uh, some others would be like hanging hanging log pieces so these could be for um, primates and other arboreal animals to just rest while suspended that's sort of what you can see in that picture there with the howler monkeys and those log platforms that's sort of what i'm going for and lastly would be like a forage log so this log would be filled with insects or honey or any other sort of food and animals like the tamandua would be able to go down to the ground and dig inside of it and use their long tongues to get the get the meal inside a few new um, update features would be closed tops um, settings for habitats so this would allow for primates to not just climb the walls but climb on the ceiling of your habitats and could be a good idea for aviaries just saying <laughs> Um, another big feature would be zoo accommodation. So using modular rooms for guests to stay at your zoo overnight and be able to put them next to animal habitats would be absolutely fantastic. This picture is from the National Zoo and Aquarium in Canberra here in Australia where you can go and stay and there, the windows of your hotel room will um, be bordered by animal habitats. So here you've got a sun bear and they've also got tigers and lions. They used to have a brown bear, um, but I think that one passed away, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that would just be a cool new feature to add in. Uh, some other features would be barrier angles and stretch points. So being able to create all sorts of different shapes with your barriers while keeping it fairly um, stable. And when it comes to the closed top settings for the habitats, it would come with a pole to support it as you can't really just have it suspended in the air without any proper support so that's sort of what I'm going for like chain link netting and sort of stuff like that um, placeable climbable faux dead trees that that would be a cool little option so fallen ones standing ones all that sort of stuff you can you see them a lot in primate enclosures for animals like great apes and gibbons and the large and small hanging ropes with ragdoll physics you could attach those to the branches and connect them between the trees creating sort of a more false real like a semi-realism um, feel for your your primate enclosures i think it would be really cool um, and sort of like doing some sort of utility so having metal trees like those at auckland zoo in new zealand um, that where they've got that for their orangutans and siamangs allowing them to climb up some very um, ingenious metal trees but yeah overall it would be a fun idea to bring into the game and Planet Zoo is all about expanding here so there's lots of new features that can still be added to the game many of which I've listed here uh, a few other um, new things could be modular playground items we've been asking for playgrounds for a long time and the Latin America animal pack seems like a good one that they could fit into the theme of. 
um, as well as some new sort of climbing platforms. There's the ones that are just made out of logs right now. They only they can only work for so long, and not everyone has the kind of patience to be building their own. So some plank like climbing platforms that are just together as one piece would be a great help for those players that aren't really into building it themselves. And another big feature is exhibits of different shapes and sizes that could also be swapped between a closed top and an open top. This would allow for several different large exhibit animals like giant salamanders, and green anaconda, alligator snapping turtle, king cobra, all sorts of large reptiles and amphibians that could be brought in and yeah, just have open top exhibits or um, closed tops. Basically allowing you to have them in a reptile house or their own standalone thing. And the different shapes will be will make them more versatile. And having it, the option of snapping the barrier to them would be a good help too. Snapping path, I mean. And that brings me on to my next one. Exhibit animals being able to be moved into habitats as well. As you can see here, you've got some alligator snapping turtles living with the American alligator. So this would be a feature that I would honestly love to see for some of our animals, particularly the iguanas, as I've seen examples of iguanas living with giant tortoises, and I would love to recreate that in Plant Zoo. That, I think that would just be so fun to see. Um, and some other animals um, could be considered as well, like diamondback terrapins, putting them in an open wetland habitat, allowing them to swim around amongst animals like beavers potentially or what other animals <laughs> live there i mean even the bullfrogs and poison dart frogs could also be um, brought into that arena as i think it is it the toledo zoo no is it there's a zoo that has a museum of science and they've got this one exhibit which allows you to walk through but you've got poison dart frogs um, on the forest floor. You may think that's a bit dangerous, but um, the dart frogs rely on their insect prey to give them the poison, so without it, they're pretty much harmless. So I think it'd be a great um, sort of addition to have, be, being able to move exhibit animals into habitats and allowing them to interact with those animals. And it could work for the giant Chinese salamander as well if we were to get that um, in a highland pack. I think that would be really fun. And just some other bonus update features would be the long-awaited doll winter variant. Basically having the regular orange doll with a bit more hair on it and a white underbelly, giving them a much more, can I say unique look? I mean, they look like red foxes, but it, it's, a, it's a doll, and most dolls are represented like that and often seen like that. And possibly the most requested animal remodel in the game although the line's pretty up there, but the Malayan Tapir remodel. Please, Frontier. <laughs> it's not a bear's tapir. Basically, just extend the trunk, give it more of a, a sloped back, and have it have a different, a slightly different walking cycle. Then you've got a, a proper Malayan Tapir. I mean, that's my perspective on it, but um, I'm sure others can go into a bit more detail on that matter. But I would just love to see it. Just love to see it. And that is the Latin America Animal Pack and the coinciding update. There's a lot of big features in that update that could be brought to other packs as I've got uh, three more in mind, three other major DLCs that could end off Planet Zoo. So I've sort of been thinking Highlands for the end of this year, then Latin America, Primates, Coastal, and then cap it all off with Avery. That's sort of my um, ideal plan for the future of Planet Zoo. If 2024 turned out to be an owl pack only year, I mean, it certainly would be fun if it was. But um, yeah, it, 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 I think we've gotten to the point where we've got pretty much all the scenery we could ever want. However, that log that that sort of log scenery that would have come with a woodlands pack is still requested. Other than that, I can't really think of much else. Getting some Native American scenery with that woodland stuff would be um, a great um, little bit of scenery to get. But other than that, 
not much scenery comes to mind. So animal pack seems to be a good way to go for the future. But I guess we'll see. Maybe we won't get a coastal animal pack, although walrus is very requested. So it's highly likely. But uh, maybe primates will be um, let go. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what the future holds regarding Planet Zoo. As we, it is confirmed for next year to continue, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens. What animals will be left out, and which will actually be able to make it in before Planet Zoo ends. Yeah, it's a great mystery, but one that I'm sort of looking forward to seeing the results of. But anyway, um, with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.